It's Marissa, and today I'm going to work with my dad to make this. Hi folks, this is Jeffrey, Marissa's dad. Yep. Yay. All right, when we put the foam on top of the chair, it needs to be bigger than the chair size. The fabric will be on top of it and the fabric will pull around over it. And so you don't want a hard edge of the wood. You want to have some foam on there. So what we'll do is make this the thickness of the pen. So it went around like this. How did you make the edges of the wood so smooth? So the edges of the wood, I cut the, ed the corners with a miter saw, and the miter saw is behind you. And then after that, I radius the corners with that tool right there, the belt sander. And here's the miter saw. And that's the, the minor chop saw. Now what I've done on this, if you look on here, is actually a little bit wider uh, kerf outside of the black line. So when I cut this out, I will actually do the same thing and give it a little extra when we cut it out. Okay, so this chair, the front end of the chair is wider than the back. And my daughter provided the dimensions for the back and the dimensions for the front and the dimensions from the front to back. And it was easy then to come up with the geometry on the angles that needed to be between the two because all you had to do was take this as length X and this is length X plus an amount. So you take length X plus that amount divided on two and then that is the difference between this being a a square so you know how much you're going to cut off because of the divide by two and then from that you can define an angle set it up on the chop saw interestingly enough if I remember correctly it was about 12 degrees and it worked out well what type of wood did you use uh, this is plywood and it's three, uh, virtually three quarter inch. It's not any more true three quarter inch. They go by 32s, 30 seconds of an inch. But this is not really stiff enough when you sit on it, it won't flex. And it also provides enough that when you install it from the chair onto the seat, you can put a screw in here and the screw will not pronounce through and go into your leg or the seat. The, or the, the final thing after the cuts were made is breaking sharp edges, which is actually a, a, a term in machinery, but it's still like an apply it. Instead of this being a true hard angle, I took a sanding block and went around to make sure that you get rid of the splinters that are going to either injure you as you're working with it or ultimately will try to cut the fabric when the fabric mm. sits on here and you continue to sit and get up and sit and get up. So when you break that sharp edge, you'll actually make the length, uh, the duration of the fabric last longer. Do you have to use a particular grit or it doesn't really matter because uh, you're just breaking grit the edge? Because which you're, you're not trying to make furniture with this. This is probably 80 grit. Mm -hmm. 80 grit works very fine like this because it'll take off quite a bit right away. And it's not an exposed piece anyway, so. Correct. The bandsaw to cut the foam, the bandsaw will make good work of this. The bandsaw will, will put a very thin curve on here. If you had a wide blade, it will want to bunch and pull this. This is not melting like you could. A lot of commercial guys that are going to cut foam are going to actually melt it with a hot wire. And that's actually a good process as well. You can make any type of turn on here. but. The type of blade I have on here should not grab this. It should cut it, and it'll make things uh, work out pretty well. Ah, yeah. 
purposefully am going outside the black line because I want to have that overage. It's better to have too much than too little. Well, you can always cut again, but you can't add it back. Features. Keep on the outside of the line. You're too close. All right, I'll give a little bit wider girth. Better? You should be wider from the start. Okay. I'll fix it on the other side. Okay, keep your hand away from the blade. No closer than that. close again. Alright, so we had the blade higher for the thicker material and I'm raising this up purposefully to make a point. The higher that you have this and the, these little bushings on the side to help guide the blade as the blade goes around, this is a bandsaw and it goes around in a circle. There's another wheel down below that's the driving motor and it's one contiguous um, blade. That's what makes it a band, a band saw. If I put my finger in at this slow, I still cut myself severely. You've got to be careful with this stuff. So, what am I talking about? Exposed blade. What you want to do is put the blade down so it's about a quarter inch above the work. So we'll lower down. We can still move the work freely, and yet we have less band saw exposed. We had it higher for the thicker material, and we don't have it as high. <laughs> I wanted extra cushy booty time so we have the second layer and because there wasn't one large enough piece we have to do a secondary piece and we're making the markings because it's much better to mark than try and do things blind. <laughs> All right, we're going to introduce a rip fence to give you an idea whether it's a table saw or a band saw. This is the rip fence and it's variable. And the idea is that you can make a straight cut that's consistent down the line. And we don't have to have that with this tool today, but we're going to do it just to demonstrate how it works. It should be the same dimension on this side. Let's check it out. Basically there. So one more check. More over. Okay, you lock down the rip fence, doesn't move consistently. And I know I need more than one piece. I need to stealth all the other side, so. So now I have the last little piece I need. This is not required. This is some um, batting, usually used in quilting, and I thought it might be fun to layer it over before putting on the fabric. Usually for fabric, you do want to be very wary of whether or not it is intended for upholstery, and that is because 
if you're using a cheaper fabric that is intended for um, clothing, it will wear really quickly. Usually the fiber count is lesser, and that means essentially the way it is woven <laughs> means it will wear and then it will get a hole in it. Or you could get something that pills, and that's like when it you get those l little balls of stuff, like with this, with yarn. Or uh, if you have something that stretches, when you're stapling it into place, it will pull in weird directions and bunch up. So for this one, you're not required to have batting. I just thought it would be fun to put it on. Also to try and make it um, a little bit more durable and to prevent the foam from wearing out. And it also will act as a, place, uh, a way to keep things in place and to add shape because I will have two different types of foam together. So the type of foam used, pure foam cushion. This is what's recommended. I, however, want it to look cool. It looks really cool. And I want the chair to look cool. And I have a lot of it. Behind the scenes, <laughs> technical difficulties. What we'll do is make this taunt and do the first course on here, and then we'll pull down on the fabric on the other side for the compression of the seat. So go ahead and put them in here. Interesting. That's fun. Go ahead. So how far apart do you want them? That's fine right now. Okay, so a couple inches. But we'll actually do another one, but what I'm trying to have you do is the cores to get the right distance. Yeah. The reason for so many is we're going to be pulling it and um, I, I, if this is not depressed, it won't fire. That's why you got to make sure this is down. Can you hear it click? Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll come over and tighten. We're rotating it around. Let's now do the other side. So do we want to pull the wood this way no, because this. the edging of this, see how this is over the edge here, but it's under on the side? Do you see what I mean? It's part of, it, of pulling it, so, so we need to pull this, this one forward. That's why I'm pulling with my other one here. Yeah. Let's say hold on to the wood while you do it. I am. Okay. Bring the fabrics. Yeah, I've got some now. I so can see one. like on the corner of this it's folded. There we go. You can now start stapling it. Okay. The but now, necessity let's see. of the fabric. So um, let's, let's see how good I want. Uh, that's, that that's actually good for the ladies. Now watch what I can do. Okay, now I'll switch over to the other side. There we go. Slow. See? Right now the other edge. Really? See how, how much better you are already? Okay, nice. And normally you would have more fabric where it wouldn't pop out like this. We're just right. dealing with errant scrap fabric. Okay, 
okay, this is where you could not do this job in this part as well. So. fabric on will be quite simple. We're doing some small adjustments. I'm just going to take these out and we're going to um, now switch this corner to be a little tighter. So this does have stretch though and it does have stretch this way but not this Which way. Which way? Uh, this way. So normally you would have a cheesecloth or some sort of dust cloth, not cheesecloth, dust cloth uh, under it, but should we just wrap it all the way around like you that? Can. I just tension this mm. just by myself. See that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then is that so you can get So these I edges? can not only that, yeah, I can, well, what I'll do is I'll get the leading edge first. Mm -hmm. And then I can pull here, and then I can pull on the other side as well. But I just wanted to do it as a practice to see what it looks like. Typically, I do projects just by myself. And so these are the kind of tools you got to come up with to do this. I'm going to go one more wrap is what I'm going to do. These I can't do until I tighten this. You're going to have to put in a lot of staples. World, see the fabric. In a perfect world, you would have doubled it over so you had a nice edge. Yeah. We couldn't do that and do this. Uh, okay. Yeah. But when she mounts the chair, you won't see that edge. So watch. We should be able to release this. Woohoo! Yeah. yeah. No, actually, yeah. here. This. Oh, is he QA? Yeah. Mm -hmm. nice, huh? Is it good? Are we on track? Can yeah. we proceed with the project? Ooh. Yes. All right. Uh, about an inch from. And you're cutting the corner for easier fold. Well, that corner's nice. Oh, I like that. But then I take this and I come up here. Yeah, that's great. Well, this is where I'll need a little help because I have to do two things at the same time. No, no, no. I need a, I came in the edge. A little in. over here. Okay, so the front though, do you like that on the side? That looks so good. Um, chairs or different pieces of furniture have you reupholstered? Not a lot. Just yeah. inside the house. Some of the stuff for the kitchen, and um, I don't want to uh, take away from people who do this professionally. They do a much better job than I do. <laughs> but I mean, when was the last time you did this? I probably did this 15 years ago. Yeah. Okay, so 15 years. And we used shears for cutting, batting, and for the fabric. Not that you'd, of course, need tenor shears. You could have used <laughs> fabric shears, but these are extra sharp. This is a body tool with a flat mallet end on it to make sure that the staples were in flat. A cat's paw for removing bad staples. And a razor for cutting parts of the materials as well. When we cut the foam, the best way to do that was with the bandsaw. And then one of the most important pieces was the staple gun. The staple gun we used was an electronic staple gun and that made things easier and quicker, but a handheld staple, non-power assist is fine. Squish.
and the finished project. Ta-da! What's really nice about it is I have the option if I want to screw it in or nail it down, or I can just plop my booty directly on it and relax. It's quite comfortable. And I have the option you can see here, if you look at the frame, to screw it in or nail it. There are two different techniques. You can really go directly through the wood, or you can go through the hole here, and then uh, make it sturdy by putting in some different screws or bolts. I'm very pleased with this. You should tell everyone to subscribe. No, really? <laughs> yeah, why not? All right, um, folks, if you enjoyed Marissa's movies and her instruction, please subscribe. And then she'll talk me in to do more work with her and you can see more of the show. Yeah. So follow my dad's advice and subscribe.